tater tots have become downright iconic. Yet how much do we really know about these tasty, crispy potato treats? They make appearances in diners, at parties, and occasionally in blockbuster movies. And how they were invented might surprise you. Here's the untold truth of tater tots. In 2017, Eater took a deep dive investigative journey into the history of tater tots. It all began with F. Nephi Grigg and his brother, Golden Grigg, two determined young Mormon entrepreneurs who each owned a potato farm, selling the bounty of their land to friends and neighbors. Prior to his death in 1995, Nephi wrote his own unpublished History of the Tot. Nephi was a visionary who believed frozen foods would soon dominate America's food industry. Following his hunch, the brothers mortgaged their farms and purchased a flash freezing plant in nearby Oregon with a plan to transform their potato crop into frozen french fries. After some trial and error, they were able to rework the potato cutting machinery to separate the fries from the leftover slivers, which were used as cattle feed. An entrepreneur who hated waste, Nephi cooked up the idea of compacting those unwanted potato scraps into bite-sized nuggets that could be fried or baked. Are you going to eat your tots? No. Can I have them? Naming their company after the two states in which they operated, Oregon and Idaho, Orida Foods Inc. was born. Tater Tots made their grand debut in 1954 at the National Potato Convention at Miami's fancy Fountain Blue Hotel. Nephi had come up with a genius plan to launch Orida's new culinary creation in spectacular style. After tracking down the chef in the hotel's kitchen, the crafty entrepreneur bribed him to cook up 15 pounds of the potato-based invention he'd brought with him, and then serve the tots to convention attendees at breakfast. His hunch that the potato bites would make a major impression on the assembled potato industry bigwigs was a good one. It worked even better than he'd hoped, and laid the groundwork for all the future success that lay glimmering on the horizon. Orida's founders had perfected their product, invented as a way to prevent unnecessary waste in production of their flash-frozen french fries. According to Nephi's notes, which said, An unnamed salesman traveled the markets playing a ukulele and demonstrating our product, and was armed only with a thesaurus and an affinity for alliteration. However, there's another origin story circulating about how the Griggs potato scrap side dish came to be called Tater Tots. The company created a contest, inviting folks from all over America to submit their ideas. In this version of the story, the winning entry came from housewife Clora Leigh Orton, combining the word tater, which is slang for potato, and tot, a word describing an infant, basically baby potatoes. To capitalize on that brief window before the market would be flooded with imitators, the name Tater Tot was trademarked, new machinery purchased, and production ramped up to mass produce their new food item. Tater Tots became a hot thing. They quickly took off, carving out an entirely new market share that hadn't existed before. As is usually the case when a new product becomes an established hit with consumers, other companies began producing their own version of Tater Tots under different names. However, even when consumers came to buy the knockoffs, they still referred to the imitators as Tater Tots, similar to how brands such as Band-Aids, Kleenex, and Corn Flakes came to become generic terms for both the original product and its imitation versions. As the New York Times reported in 2014, Orida struck back with its Imitators advertising campaign. In one of the commercials, tater tot-like products are seen wearing various disguises in hopes of tricking consumers, ranging from a Groucho Marx nose glasses mustache combo to a pirate outfit. Federico Ariola, vice president of the Consumer Products Brand Business Unit at Heinz, owner of the Orida brand, said, The Imitators campaign was very successful. The campaign, Ariola added, was effective at reminding consumers that, quote, the original is the only one. DIY Tots In addition to imitation tater tots, the product has also been hit by competition from home cooks who've concocted their own recipes. Creating DIY tater tots, however, is not as easy as it might appear. Making the bite-sized potato nuggets without all that specialized machinery is actually quite an undertaking. David Kinch, chef at acclaimed California restaurant Manresa, has shared his special recipe for DIY tater tots. Anyone who attempts to tackle it, however, will probably want to take the day off, 
given that the recipe takes a whopping 12 hours to make. As Wes Rowe, chef and owner of San Francisco's Wes Burger & More, told Eater, they had made their own homemade tater tots in the past, but decided to stop doing that and instead serve customers OG Oreida tots. Rowe said, After all the time and labor, we all agreed we just love our classic Oreida tots the most. One unfortunate side effect of the production process that creates tater tots is when starch-heavy foods are heated at high temperatures, it creates a chemical called acrylamide. But it wasn't until 2002 that its presence was detected in food. This presented a big problem, given that the state of California was already listing acrylamide as one of the carcinogenic substances listed within Proposition 65. That legislation, passed in 1984, required that consumers be given warnings about any cancer-causing substances they may come into contact with, which included the presence of acrylamide in tater tots. Bottom line, acrylamide is not a new problem. More than likely, it has been around in some form or amount since we began to cook. As a result of a lawsuit launched by the state of California against Orida and other manufacturers of potato products, Orida agreed to a settlement that involved paying $600,000 in costs and penalties in addition to cutting acrylamide levels in the company's french fries and tater tots in half. Folks who love tater tots have unleashed their creativity on clever and occasionally bonkers recipes that take the bite-sized spud snacks in some bold new culinary directions. For example, Brit & Co. compiled a roster of 17 unique hacks that use tater tots as the basis of everything from waffles to a bacon cheeseburger tater tot casserole. Other hacks include appetizers such as bacon-wrapped tater tot bombs, buffalo chicken tater tot nachos, and even a tater tot breakfast pizza. For a meat-free tater tot hack, adventurous home cooks can try out this recipe for a tater tot burger, which uses tater tots to create a meatless vegetarian patty designed to satisfy even the most ardent meat eater. In addition, tater tots are also becoming popular to hack at Hanukkah with recipes available online demonstrating how to use tater tots to create easy-to-make latkes. And The Mythical Kitchen offers a cheese, bacon, and sour cream tater tot bowl. Anyone who's been following the cooking instructions on the packaging of tater tots has been doing themselves a major disservice. Or at least, that's the opinion of The Kitchen's Kelly Foster, who wrote in 2018 that cooking those little potato nuggets using the recommended time on the package may heat them enough to render them edible but she said that's hardly enough for them to reach their full, crispy, crusted, creamy center potential. Foster recommends putting your stopwatch away and instead looking at visual cues to determine when a batch of tater tots has reached nirvana-like perfection. She added, You'll know the tots are done and ready when they have a deep golden brown color with an outer crust that looks exceptionally crispy. According to Foster, the brand's recommended cooking time, 25 to 35 minutes, simply isn't long enough to achieve that tater tot ideal. Instead, she recommends a solid 60 minutes in the oven. As Foster pointed out, that additional cooking time makes the most delicious difference in both the taste and texture of tater tots by causing them to, quote, shrink and dry out a little. Foster concluded, and that makes them even crispier all around on the outside with a potatoey center that's more dense and creamy. For a brief and glorious six-week period in the spring of 2018, Vancouver sports bar Jaggers created an all-tater tots menu. The ultimate goal was an attempt to make all of the bar's patrons' wildest potato-fueled dreams come true. Jaggers' specialty menu items included tot esquites, cheesy tots, and tot poutine. For the latter, tater tots were substituted for french fries in the quintessentially Quebecois specialty known as poutine in which crispy fries, or in this case, tater tots, are topped with hunks of cheese curds and drenched in savory gravy. There are indeed many ways to hack tater tots. Using the crispy potato snacks as the basis for entirely new and unforeseen culinary delights. In that vein, fans of tater tots should pay tribute to Jim Parker, a former Portland journalist who was at the forefront of the Pacific Northwest City's pioneering craft beer movement. In an obituary of Parker, who passed away in 2019, the Oregonian highlighted another of his achievements. Tachos. What are tachos? Exactly what you think. Nachos, but with tater tots substituted for corn chips, topped with black olives, melted cheese, jalapenos, sour cream, and other toppings traditionally associated with nachos. The tater tot-based meal became a staple of Parker's Oaks Bottom Public House in Portland. 
Parker said of his invention in 2015, they looked at me like I was growing a third ear. They said, that sounds like stoner food. They were humoring me to put them on the menu, but it ended up being one of our most ordered items. Tater tots are more than just a delicious snack. In fact, the bite-sized potato gems have also become part of pop culture. This became evident in the 2018 film Venom, based on the Marvel Comics character. Food. Ah! Who said that? As played by actor Tom Hardy, Eddie Brock is a maverick journalist who becomes paired with an alien symbiote to become the titular Venom, a massive, monstrous beast with a seemingly insatiable appetite, which Hardy attempts to satiate in a memorable scene by pouring an entire bag of still-frozen tater tots down his gullet. In an interview with Sci-Fi Wire, director Ruben Fleischer explained the character's obsession with tater tots, which had nothing to do with product placement. He said, There was no deal with Orida. It was just in the script originally. It was always kind of a funny thing that the writers came up with, that he loves tater tots. We actually had to pare it down a little bit. There was a scene that we shot that didn't make it in the film, where he's at the grocery store buying, and the Venom tendrils come out and grab a bunch of tater tots. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.